Welcome back to the channel. This is Wei Hao at Direct Impact Solutions. Let's cut to the chase. What is FileMaker Data Migration Tool and why do I want to use it? To put it simply, the FileMaker Data Migration Tool, or commonly referred to as FMDMT, is a command line tool that allows you to import data from one FileMaker file to another with a single command line. So why do I want to use it? In Claris' own documentation, they listed several reasons. It saves your time because you don't need to write your own migration script. It's faster in performance. It maps field for you based on ID and name. It allows you to migrate the user accounts and custom value list, as well as automatically adjust the next serial numbers. But to me, all of these advantages boil down to one thing. It makes having separated development and production environments a practical setup. There are so many reasons to have separated development and production environments, but I think you and I both know the only one that matters. We don't want our changes to break the whole production system. So with a separated development environment, we can develop and test our code without having to worry about breaking things in production. But having two environments means we will need to find a way to deploy the new version from development to production. This is where FMDMT comes into play. So now, let me show you a standard deployment procedure you can adopt with the help of FMDMT. Let's start with the preparation work. First, make sure you either have a full access account or an account with extended privilege FM migration in both the file you're trying to import the data from and the file you're trying to import the data to. The FM migration extended privilege is not created in the system by default. So if you want to do that, open uh, manage security, click advanced settings, go to extended privileges and use this new um, button to create this uh, new extended privilege like this. After that, you can assign that to a dedicated account only used for data migration. Then you need to download the migration tool. You will need to have a FileMaker developer subscription in order to do so. I've put a link in the description below to this page in order to obtain one. Once you have it, log in to your Claris community account and uh, here there is a section called uh, My Benefits, and from here you can see the FileMaker Data Migration Tool link. There are two versions of the migration tool, one for Mac and another one for Windows. So download the one that you want to use based on which operating system that you will do your migration with. Now, let me show you how to use the DMT for deployment. Please note that I'm showing the menu way of doing this in order to demonstrate the process. But pretty much all activities I'll show can be done through shell scripting. So feel free to turn the process I'm about to show into an automated procedure or build a FileMaker app that leverage the send event script step to streamline the process. All right, first, I want to get a copy of the new version I want to deploy. So let me log into my FileMaker server admin console for my development server. From here, let me close the file. From here, I need to close the file I want to deploy and then download it. Once I've downloaded the file, I need to create a clone of my new file. So let's say this is the file I downloaded. I'm going to open it and go to file, save a copy as, and uh, choose the option clone and save it. So now I have a clone version of the new file that I want to deploy. 
after you've created the clone, do not open it again. Because a lot of times our FileMaker file contains uh, on first window open script trigger, and it might create records uh, in the clone file, which makes it no longer a clone. Alternatively, you can also combine step one and two by using the backup feature in FileMaker Server Admin Console to create a backup with a clone of the file. All right, step three. Now that I have my deployment file, I need to get a copy of the current version of the file where all data are stored. So similar to what we did in step one, I will go to my production FileMaker Server Admin Console, close the file, and download a copy of it. In this step, I prefer not to use the backup feature because it's better to keep the production file offline during the deployment to prevent any accidental data entry since the procedure to download the file from prod is pretty much the same as step one i'm not going to show that here so let's just uh, pretend this file named uh, ode is the one i downloaded from prod step four now let's use data migration tool to migrate data from the old version to the new version uh, i prefer to move both the old file and the clone file into the same folder together with the actual migration tool itself. So now you want to open up the uh, command line tool based on your operating system. For Mac, that will be terminal. I usually I would do a change directory uh, and use uh, drag and drop to go to the folder where all files reside. And then uh, I will put in the command line for data migration. So I have written the uh, command line already. Let me just paste that in here. The syntax is actually very straightforward. You tell it what is the path to the old file and what is the username and password that you can use to open the file. And then you tell it what is the path to the new file, the clone one. And you tell it what's the credential you can use to open that one. And then you tell it what you want to name the new file. Uh, you can also use additional options to choose not to import certain data. For example, you can choose to ignore the user accounts or value list. I usually disable importing value lists because the new version tend to have the more up-to-date value list data. And you can also find a detailed guide on FileMaker Data Migration Tool linked in the description down below. So let's hit enter and have this run. You'll see it gives you a very brief summary about your uh, migration. So usually I would check the report here and see if there's any tables or fields not migrated. Uh, if there are any, first of all, don't panic. Sometimes that's normal. For example, if in the new version you actually deleted some fields, then of course there will be fields from your uh, old version that won't be able to find a target field to migrate the data into. So. When I do see you know, some tables not migrated or some um, fields not migrated, I would switch to my full access account to run this again and use the option dash V, which will turn on the verbose mode to give me a more detailed report. So I'll see which field or which table did not get imported and why. As the last step, now that we have a file that has the data from the old version and the functionalities of the new version, this is what we can put back to the production server uh, to use as the new version. So from here, you can just use FileMaker Pro to upload this file to uh, your production FileMaker server. One thing to note here is that if you have external container data, be very careful. Make sure when you copied your old version to this folder, you also copied all the remote container data with it. Otherwise, when you upload this new version to your uh, 
production server, it will wipe out all the uh, remote container data. And of course, depends on your solution. Uh, once you have uploaded your new version to prod, you might need to do some post deployment check. So that's it. That's how you can use DMT to do deployment. Pretty simple, right? So now you have learned how to use FileMaker Data Migration Tool to do deployment. I would highly recommend you to create separate environments for your development and production activities. You can go with more than two environments if necessary, and the process to promote uh, one version from one environment to the next will be the same. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We publish FileMaker videos every week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.